Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us from the National Museum of the Marine Corps. My name is Madeline Fonta, and I am an educator here at the museum. And I am so excited to present to you our Animals in the Military program. Today, I will be speaking to you about the special role that animals play in helping various military branches carry out their missions. As you can see from the image behind me, our museum has a very interesting and unique design. And many of our visitors think that it looks like a triangle or a sinking ship. However, our museum looks like this because it was designed to represent the six Marines that raised the flag during the Battle of Iwo Jima in World War II. And the exciting part is that we actually have this flag in our World War II gallery, and it is one of our most popular artifacts. Hopefully, in the future, you can come and see it in person. The National Museum of the Marine Corps is located in Triangle, Virginia, which is about 30 minutes away from Washington, D.C. Our museum is free to the public and open every day with the exception of Christmas Day. And we would love it if one day you were able to come and visit us and see all of the artifacts and displays that we have to offer. Now, let's go inside the museum. If you ever came to our museum in person, Leatherneck Gallery would be the first place that you would enter. Leatherneck Gallery has a variety of macro artifacts. A macro artifact is a label that applies to our larger artifacts, such as tanks, amphibious vehicle tractors, and airplanes. All of these displays reinforce the idea that the Marines are prepared to fight in the air, sea, and on land. We have included these macro artifacts into displays throughout the gallery that depict different combat engagements throughout United States Marine Corps history. This space speaks to the very core of what it means to be a United States Marine and brings to mind feelings of courage, determination, compassion, innovation, and the tight bonds that are formed between Marines. Animals have played an important role in the United States military from the very beginning, when horses were used as the main means of transportation in the Revolutionary War. The role of animals in the military has changed a lot over the years, and there are still animals working in the military today. We'll talk about that later in our program. During this program, we are going to talk about some very famous military animals from the past, and then we'll talk about the animals that are still working alongside our servicemen and women today. The first animal that we are going to talk about today is Sergeant Reckless. Sergeant Reckless was a horse who became part of the United States Marine Corps during the Korean War. Reckless was between 700 and 900 pounds, and her body was about 13 hands high, which is about four and a half feet. She was purchased by Lieutenant Eric Peterson from a young Korean boy for just $250 in Seoul, South Korea. The young boy was trying to raise money to pay for his sister's medical needs. The Marines had been fighting in rugged mountain terrain and packing their own artillery shells to the firing positions. A horse could carry far more than a man up those steep mountain trails, and U.S. forces were using horses and mules captured from the enemy as pack animals. If you come to our museum, you can visit our Korean War Gallery, where we talk about the Korean War. And also in this gallery, we have a section where you can see pictures of Sergeant Reckless as she helped the Marines fight. We even have one of her real horseshoes on display right here in our museum. And of course, 
you can look at our scale and see how tall she actually was. Reckless was trained to be a pack horse, meaning she was trained to carry large amounts of material over long distances to help the Marines. Once she was officially trained, she became part of the 5th Marine Regiment of the 1st Division of the United States Marine Corps. She was a real Marine. Reckless was trusted by the Marines for whom she worked. She was allowed to roam around the campsites freely, and on cold nights, she would even sneak into the Marines' tents to sleep because it was warmer. She was also known for her healthy appetite. She would eat anything, including scrambled eggs, pancakes, Hershey bars, and Coca-Cola. Occasionally, if she thought she wasn't getting enough attention, uh, she would act out and eat a hat or a blanket. Reckless served in numerous combat missions during the Korean War. She helped to carry supplies for the Marines, as well as evacuate Marines who were injured from the battlefield to the medics nearby. She learned the routes that she had to travel very quickly. And after only a few trips with her trainer, she began traveling those routes and carrying supplies all alone. She is famous for making 51 trips all alone on one single day during the Battle of Outpost Vegas in 1953. During this battle, enemy soldiers were able to see her as she made her way across no man's land, which was a very dangerous area that went through rice paddies and up a steep mountain trail, which led to where the Marines were fighting. The Marines said that seeing Reckless make those trips gave them the morale boost that they needed to keep fighting. The battle lasted five days, but over the course of just one day, she carried three 186 rounds of ammunition, which weighed over 9,000 pounds. And she was under enemy fire the entire time, which was very dangerous. After she dropped off the supplies at the fighting sites, she would carry wounded Marines back down the mountain to safety. She even served as a shield for Marines who were trapped and trying to make their way back to a safer spot. Her Marines loved her so much that they would throw their own black jackets over her to protect her from enemy fire. She was wounded twice during this battle, but she did not let that slow her down. Her actions were so heroic that she was promoted to the rank of sergeant at the end of this battle. Over the course of her military service, Sergeant Reckless won 10 different awards for her military service, including two Purple Hearts, which is an award that you receive for being injured in battle. After the war was over, Sergeant Reckless retired from combat military service. The social Sergeant Reckless became a media star and was shipped to the U.S. with the Marines in 1954, arriving in time to celebrate the Marine Corps birthday with cake. Sergeant Reckless was so beloved by her Marines and the whole country that she was invited to be on television shows and she was even invited to attend special events like the Marine Corps birthday ball which is the photo that you see now. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the Marine Corps, uh, it's a special occasion that Marines celebrate on November 10th. The reason why it is so special is because tradition has it that it is the most likely the day when the first men joined the Marine Corps in 1775. According to the story, the Marines were formed on November 10, 1775 at Tun Tavern in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The Marines were formed there by a man named Samuel Nicholas, who was the first commandant of the United States Marine Corps. 
The commandant is the title given to the person with uh, the highest rank in the Marines, meaning that Samuel Nicholas was in charge of every Marine who fought during the American Revolution. For a brief period of time after the American Revolution, the Marine Corps was disbanded. Although they were recreated not long after, the Marine Corps still treats November 10th, 1775 as their official birth date. Starting in 1925, the birthday has slowly become a special event with more and more traditions added on to the celebration. All over the world where Marines are stationed, they make a special effort to have a cake which is cut with the Mameluke sword, which is carried by Marine Corps officers. I can only imagine how much fun Sergeant Reckless had while celebrating the Marine Corps birthday. And here at the National Museum of the Marine Corps, we celebrate the Marine Corps birthday by hosting a cake cutting ceremony in Leatherneck Gallery where the first slice of cake is passed to the oldest Marine present, who in turn gives it to the youngest Marine to represent how knowledge and experience is passed from the old to the young of the Marine Corps. The Marines take this birthday seriously as a way of keeping the tr history and traditions of the Marines alive and as a way of honoring those who have come before. Along with having a Sergeant Reckless display in our Korean War gallery, we also have a beautiful monument of her erected in our Semper Fidelis Park. The life-size bronze statue is called the Uphill Battle, and the 10-foot tall, 1,200-pound monument sits at the end of a corridor of trees and was created by wildlife artist Jocelyn Russell. It was unveiled and dedicated on July 26, 2013. If you want to learn more about Sergeant Reckless, look for Sergeant Reckless, The True Story of the Little Horse Who Became a Hero by Patricia McCormick in your local bookstore or library. This book tells the story of Sergeant Reckless's life during and after the Korean War. Horses today play an important role in the military, but are mainly used for ceremonial purposes like parades or at events to honor the lives of our brave servicemen and women. However, horses are not the only animals that the military has used. Let's take a look at some of the other animals that have been drafted into military service over the years. Carrier pigeons, also known as homing pigeons, are known for their ability to find their way home over a long distance. These pigeons carry messages that are placed into tubes on their legs. One special carrier pigeon by the name of Cher Ami is known for having saved an entire lost battalion in World War I. In October 1918, approximately 500 of the U.S. Army 77th Infantry Division were trapped behind enemy lines after an attack on German forces in the Argonne Forest. This group of American soldiers were surrounded by enemy forces, but they were also receiving fire from their friends, the Allies, who were unaware of their position. Communication was difficult as the messengers who were trying to get help were either lost or ran into German patrols. Carrier pigeons became the only method of communicating with their headquarters. After two other pigeons were lost, Cherami came to the rescue, flying over a dangerous no man's land to the Allies' position with a message that read, we are along the road parallel 276.4. Our artillery is dropping a barrage directly on us. For heaven's sake, stop it! Despite being wounded, Cher Ami flew 25 miles back to headquarters to deliver that important message. He saved the lives of 194 soldiers that day. 
Cherami was awarded a medal known as the Distinguished Service Cross for his bravery. Carrier pigeons are not used by the military anymore, but they were extremely important before the invention of the telephone. So our military has used horses, pigeons, and you probably already know that various branches of the United States military have also used dogs to help their missions since World War I. That's over 100 years. So let's get started with learning about a few beloved military mascots, starting with Sergeant Stubby. Sergeant Stubby was part of the 102nd Infantry Regiment in the Army in World War I. He was in the Army for over a year and participated in 17 different battles. He was originally sent to France just to be the division's mascot. But when he arrived, they discovered that he had a great talent to do so much more. His heightened sense of smell allowed him to warn the men of impending attacks, and he was very helpful when they needed to locate a wounded soldier. Sergeant Stubby would either lead the injured soldier to safety or bark so that the medics could find him. Once, he even caught a German spy attempting to copy a map of the Allies' position. Stubby held the seat of the spy's pants in his teeth until American soldiers arrived to help. Stubby was wounded in battle in April 1918 and was sent to a Red Cross hospital to recover. While he was in the hospital recovering, he helped to boost the morale of other soldiers by visiting them at their bedsides, much like the therapy dogs that visit hospitals today. After the war, he became a national celebrity, leading parades, meeting three presidents, and making public appearances. Another important mascot is the Marine Corps' very own Chesty the Bulldog. He's named after Lieutenant General Lewis Burwell Puller, who went by the nickname Chesty. Chesty is the most decorated Marine in American history. He was awarded five Navy crosses and one Distinguished Service Cross for his leadership and bravery in battle. Chesty Puller is so important to the Marine Corps that a common way to end the day during boot camp is to say, good night, Chesty, wherever you are. Chesty the Bulldog has served as the mascot for the United States Marine Corps for many years. However, he was not the first Bulldog to enlist. The first mascot was Sergeant Major Jiggs, who served as the Marine Corps mascot during World War I from 1922 to 1928, and Jiggs II, his successor, served from 1928 to 1929. Chesty would be sworn into the Corps in 1957, and the name would be passed on to all of the dogs that served as Marine Corps mascots. Chesty the 15th is the current mascot and he was recently promoted to the rank of Lance Corporal. As you can see, dogs have and continue to serve a very important role in the military. Now, we have one more animal to talk about, and it may come as a surprise to you. <gasps> dolphins! Dolphins, particularly bottlenose dolphins, are used by the United States Navy to help with various missions. Dolphins and even sea lions are trained by the Navy because they are known for their adaptability and easy trainability to help the Navy in a variety of marine life environments. The dolphins and sea lions are used primarily to search and mark different objects under the water that may be obstacles for the Navy and their ships as they travel through open water. Dolphins are known for their sophisticated sonar capabilities, and this is very valuable to the Navy. Sonar is how dolphins and other sea animals detect objects underwater, and it helps them measure the depth of the water. Dolphins are able to use sonar by emitting a sound 
and measuring the rate of return after the sound is reflected. Sonar is very important to the Navy as ships and submarines rely on sonar technology to be able to tell what is in the water around them. Because of this ability, dolphins and sea lions can easily detect objects in the water that may be dangerous, and they are able to dive hundreds of feet below the water's surface, something that is not easy for humans to do. So as you can see, the military continues to rely on many animals to do important jobs, even today. If you have any questions for us, please contact nmmcdlquestions at gmail.com. Thank you so much for participating in our program today. I hope you enjoyed it, and we hope that one day you can visit us here at the National Museum of the Marine Corps.